Welcome aboard the Nitty Stew podcast. My name is Leanne. I am the Nitty Stew. Stew is short for stewardess. I am a Canadian flight attendant and a knitter. And this is my YouTube channel where I bring you on the road with me, pack you in my suitcase, if you will, and along with all my knitting, and we chat about all the knitting things. And I get to bring you some footage usually of the local yarn scene in the cities that I overnight in as part of my job. Today is March the 11th, I believe. And what was that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm hearing sounds. Um, oh, okay, here we go, I'm back. Today is March 11th. I am in the city of Winnipeg at the airport actually, and I'm not going to bring you footage from Winnipeg. My plan is to venture to Mission and show you a local yarn shop there. But while I had this light and this really cool mural backdrop, um, that little light switch is bothering me. I'm gonna move, okay, there we go. Yeah, I thought I'd take um, the opportunity to film when I have this beautiful lighting. And I'm just so excited to talk about my finished objects and my works in progress. It's been about a month since my last episode and I thought I'd get to it. This is episode 30. Thank you so much everyone who is continuing to show up comment, like, subscribe, hitting the notification bell, following me on Ravelry and Instagram where I can be found as the Nitty Stew. So thank you everyone for being here. Um, I would invite you to maybe grab a beverage or your crafting and cozy in for some chat. Um, I'm having a tea. I'm <laughs> definitely needing um, something for my throat. I'm a little, <clears throat> little horse. I don't look like a horse. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is what we got going on today. I just finished flying. I started this morning on another three-day pairing and was up at 3 a.m. and finished flying by 3 p.m. here in Winnipeg. So I just took the bun out. <laughs> the hair's a little poofy on the one side. Um, I wear a side bun for my flight attendant look, so it's a little poofy. Um, and I'm a little bit tired, but I actually feel quite energized and exciting and excited. I have two finished objects and I have four works in progress and some dream knitting all, I just want to cast on all the things. <laughs> so my Ravelry queue and my add to cart situation on Ravelry for patterns and stuff, it just never ends. Um, and if you're here, that's probably the case for you too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's get started on finished objects. My first finished object is what I am wearing. This is called My Fletching, a design by Jessica McDonald. And I love this so much. I am, I am just, I can barely speak. I love it so much. I'm going to turn around for you to have a look. I showed it as a work in progress and I could not be happier with this design. My Fletching by Jessica McDonald. Okay, so fletching are the feathers um, on aerodynamic things on an arrow and it has just the most meditative repeats for color work ever. And it's a top-down yoke construction. And I knit it with Rama Finnelgarn that was gifted to me from Smita from Your Next Knit, which is an online yarn shop based out of Vancouver, Canada. She also offers anyone who purchases using the code Nitty Stew 15, 15% off. She has some great woolly wools and is curating quite a lovely collection of yarn. So thank you, Smita, for giving me the opportunity to fall in love with Rama Fienel. So it is Norwegian wool, 100%. It is, it is um, considered a sport weight. I would say it's more of a, a heavy fingering weight yarn. And I was concerned if um, with my gauge, as I've noticed since, I wanted to talk about this, I noticed since I switched over to Chayagu's metal circular needles, and it never really even occurred to me, although it should have, but my gauge is a lot looser since I switched. I used to always knit with 
um, Nose Pride wooden needles. And now um, I'm, not, I'm not upset about it. It actually, I, I like it. I just, I wasn't aware of how loose my gauge would get. So this pattern calls for a gauge of 24 stitches on a US 5, 3.75 millimeter needle. And with my gauge on the color work uh, after blocking, my gauge was varying between 21 to 22 stitches on a US 4, 3.5 metal Chagu. So um, almost basically a DK uh, gauge using this heavy fingering sport weight yarn. But I think the color work turned out great. This, I would recommend this as a first um, color work sweater for anyone who's new to color work because of the, the short repeats and the tiny, tiny, tiny floats. And it just, it gives you rest rounds between the color work yoke. Um, I did not get tired of this at all, even <laughs> knitting the body after I had finished the, the yoke. It's because I was so excited to, to have it and to wear it. And just in time for St. Patrick's Day um, and spring, I wrote on my Ravelry notes that spring had barfed on me and I'm not upset about it at all. And I definitely enjoyed this. I do have other Jessica McDonald patterns in my Ravelry library. And I just, I'm drawn to the way her garment, her well, her color work yokes for sure, but her garments seem to have a beautiful fit. And I think this one is no exception. And also she designs with woolly wools. I think a lot of um, Barrett Wilco, which is Wisconsin wool out of the US. And now that I know my gauge on Ralma Phenol, I could see me making a lot more things with it. Uh, it's light, but um, toothy, and but it's not scratchy. I am wearing it with this white um, long sleeve shirt underneath because I just think it looks nice and it makes it pop. But for me, I, I just like it with this white shirt underneath. And I had five balls of the Roma Phenol in spring green and two balls of the natural white in Roma Phenol. This is all I have left <laughs> of, the, of the fifth ball. So um, I did maybe crop it slightly. And I, all I used was 14 grams of the natural white for the yolk area. So still have a fair bit of that left. The only thing I will say um, that I'm not absolutely over the moon with is perhaps some extra fabric under the arms and maybe I, the way I taper. Um, I am learning this about my garments. So um, maybe I'll, I mean, it looks, of course it looks fine as I'm talking about it right now, but if you could see, there is a bit of extra fabric that for me, I would personally maybe like less. So it would be um, more of a form fitting. It's not like a ton, but it's, it's a little bit extra. And I did actually, um, because of that gauge difference, I started making a size three in the pattern. And then I realized that my gauge was quite off and I went down to a size two. And perhaps that is the reason. I went down to a size two for the body. And you can't really tell, um, I decreased uh, about four or six stitches every few rounds to get down to the circumference for the size two. So yeah, 10 out of 10, five stars, super pleased. And I'm looking forward to making more of Jessica McDonald's patterns in the future. So this is finished object number one, my fletching. Yeah, highly recommend. So my second and only other finished object is my balaclava. This is the Gaetan balaclava by Simone Alexandra Urso, also known as Temple of Knit. <laughs> so this one isn't so much a, a 10 out of 10, uh, five star finished object. And I will put it on and show you. And this has nothing to do with the pattern at all. Uh, once again, it's a story of gauge and how that didn't quite work out. I will put on my balaclava, which is a size one. My, my head circumference is 21 and a half inches. And I should have bought the children's size pattern because the, uh, the Gitan Balaclava gauge with a US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle, is the gauge suggested in the pattern 
is 29 stitches over 44 rows in this garter rib stitch pattern, which is super, I, I super lovely. And I was having such a good time knitting on it. I also used a US-3 um, Metal Chiagu, and my gauge was 25 stitches and 44, and sorry, 34 rows. So my gauge was way off, so it's fairly oversized. Um, you know, for a minute there, I was trying to convince myself that it looked like The Hilly Hood by Ann Bensel. But then I realized, what is it that I don't like about this? When I showed this to Dave, uh, my husband, he's like, that's quite a thing you made there. <laughs> um, yes, it is quite a thing. And I realized um, that I look like the sponge towel guys from the paper towel campaign by uh, Kruger Industries. I don't know if this is a Canadian only thing, but I will insert a picture here or somewhere of um, what makes me laugh so hard when I put this on because I feel like I look just like the sponge paper towel. It is so lovely and soft and I love my yarn choice. Um, I used two, two different yarns held together. I used, uh, for the first time, Arweta by Filcolana in the marzipan colorway and I held it with leftover um, baby sorry alpaca silk from crux fibers in the ptarmigan colorway I used this on my um, fleur shawl so with the little flecks of colors it's hand dyed in white horse Yukon by Brittany if you don't know Brittany and it was my first time trying the Filgalana Arweta it's 80% um, virgin wool and 20% nylon I got this from Galt Galt yarn in Ontario. So the two together made this. And I guess if my gauge wasn't so off and I didn't feel so silly, um, you know, I mean, I guess to each his own, it would keep my neck lovely and warm. But yeah, I should have checked my gauge. That's, that's my bad. But I was just having such a blast that I forgot to check. And I checked at the end. I very gently blocked it. I'm not really blocked, I just soaked it and barely handled it because I could tell it was getting kind of long. I'm gonna take this off, I'm cooking here. Um, yeah, the only other thing I changed from the pattern is I did a uh, German twisted cast on and because of my row gauge difference, I picked up way less um, stitches for the face hole. That should have been my first clue and I used a two and a half US, which is a three millimeter for that portion for the ribbing of the, around the face. So um, it is just so beautiful, this wool and yarn. I would really like to make something that I'm going to wear. This I won't be wearing because I just can't, it just cracks me up when I put it on. <laughs> so I will be frogging this, but I wanted to share um, my experience knitting with the Filcolana and holding it with that beautiful baby, brush baby Surrey alpaca. I just think that's stunning. And I really um, enjoyed having to concentrate on this to make sure that I was doing the increasing in, in the ribbing and then the garter right and wrong side rows. Pretty happy, I mean, proud of the way this um, Bella Clavet was shaped. It was really fun. And yeah, had I gone down to the correct size and got gauge, this would, I think, be a wonderful balaclava. But I'm gonna reclaim the yarn and make something else with it. Before I get started on my works in progress, I will insert the footage here that I get tomorrow from the local yarn shop in Mission. Please enjoy. Okay, so my adventure here in Abbotsford has begun. I bundled up because it's only seven degrees, 44 Fahrenheit and it's drizzling slightly, but the wind isn't very bad. So I am, I believe at the right bus stop, it is about a 30 minute transit ride to Mission and I'm going to find Trendy or Whatnot Yarn and Gift Company, I believe it's called. I did indeed make it without any issues over to the city of Mission. It was a $2.25 bus ride and in 30 minutes, I was right here. This is the platform of the West Coast Express, which is a train that goes straight to downtown Vancouver, which is about an hour and 30 minutes away. 
Mission derives its name from the old Roman Catholic mission, St. Mary's Mission, founded in 1861. This post office here was changed to Mission City Post Office 1 in October 1891. Sometimes called the gem of the Fraser Valley, Mission is surrounded by incredible beauty of mountains and natural forest settings, and it's actually only a 15 minute drive from the U.S. border. This historic street and much of the diners and also some of the beautiful uh, waterfalls in the area have been used for some films, um, Hallmark movies, and also there's a scene in the Twilight movie or one of the Twilight movies where Bella jumps over Cascade Falls in the area. I quickly came upon the reason for coming here, trendy or whatnot yarns and gifts, where I was greeted very warmly by the lovely owner named Mady. She was also sitting there knitting with a friend, Sophie. What a lovely store. Please enjoy the footage. So as the name implies, this store is more than just yarn. There is a collection of artisan treasures in the store from locals, um, some beautiful handwoven jackets here, just gorgeous. Um, a lot of tradition and expression for the artists in the area. And look at this jacket. This is absolutely stunning. I was just blown away. Um, it is also attached to a place called the Loom Room, which is where they do classes for the Weaver and Spinners Guilds of Mission. Congratulations to Mady. She's about to hit 10 years of having this beautiful store, and that's no small feat in this, uh, this time. She does have a website and she ships anywhere, but if you are ever near Mission BC, I highly recommend popping in to visit. It has so many treasures. Also very fascinating. The Mission Weaver and Spinners Guild, Guild has designed the official tartan for the city of Mission. The tartan has been registered with the Scottish Register of Tartans. The fabric is woven at a Scottish mill and can be bought per meter at $85 per meter. Guild members also hand weave the tartan designs into blankets, placemats, towels, and scarves. I really enjoyed my visit at your shop. Thank you so much, Mady. And also thank you to YouTube viewer Petra Vandermulen4751, who suggested I visit the shop. After that, I needed to uh, caffeinate. I had been up um, since quite early in the day and I hit a sort of wall. So right next door is this awesome cafe called Penny. I popped in here for a little latte and a little bit of knitting time before heading back to the hotel. Okay, a few fun facts before I wrap up the video. The population of Mission, according to a 2023 census, is approximately 43,000 residents. Mission is site of Canada's first train robbery BC's first rail link to the United States, the first bridge across the Fraser River, and one of the earliest hydroelectric dams. It is also home of the Western Canadian Soapbox Derby. 
and also note the first inhabitants of this area were the people of the Stolo First Nation. These geese were waiting for me as I got back to the hotel room. Okay, welcome back. Time for the whip party. Uh, who am I with four whips on the go? Okay, work in progress number one I've shown you. It was, uh, I think, on my last podcast, maybe even the one before. Just going to grab that here. My Trista. This is my color work yoke. I'm going to put it on for you. This pattern needs no introduction. I'm obviously late to this party. This is a Jennifer Steingast pattern. And I'm making it out of Istex Letlopi, Icelandic wool. And I finished the yoke. And I have split for sleeves and the body. And I've already blocked this um, two or three times. And by that I mean I soaked it in wool wash. And then I hung it over the back of a chair just to get the gravity um, advantage to let all the color work relax. And to see all um, my most important thing is my the the underarm depth for me and I think I'm okay um, I really hope so anyways I measured my yoke depth for um, the pattern versus the pattern and I get nine I got nine inches which is good for me but it was actually I think a good inch more than the pattern said but yeah nothing worse than too short of armholes right so um, I'm very happy with this so far. I'm looking forward to finishing the arms and the body. I will keep on trying it on as I go. Um, my main color here is pine green. Oh, I just love the heathered look and how rustic this yarn is. Definitely not next to skin for me personally, but this will be more of a, instead of a jacket, I'll be wearing this pullover for the colder months. And when I go visit my friends up in Whitehorse, Yukon, um, tickets have been purchased for my flight up there. So I'm really looking forward to spending some time with um, a few of my knitting friends in, at the end of September up in Whitehorse. And I'll be wearing my Trista. And I believe Loretta from Knit My Way Home podcast has already made hers and is likely finished and might have been wearing it last year. <laughs> so, um, the one good thing about being late to the pattern party is that in this pattern it calls for two sets of short row shaping and a lot of people who had made it said that the second short row shaping which comes is supposed to come after you do the yoke uh, and it apparently just gives a lot of extra bulk in the back and that's not something I'm interested in so I didn't do that. Um, yeah, and I still have a fair bit left of my colors that I used for my yoke. This is Light Ash Heather, which is a, I, I think it just is beautiful. And this is Oatmeal Heather, and this is Chocolate. So these are my colors for my Trista, and I'm going to just keep working away on that. It's just body. I'm using a US 7, which is a four and a half millimeter needle. And then for the neckline, I actually cast on uh, my modification there was that I used, um, I think at least, uh, I think I went down two sizes for the cast on of the neck because Jennifer Steingass, per, um, a lot of the patterns said that the neckline would have been way too big. I have to agree because um, even with the far less stitches that I cast on, it's still quite wide, but uh, I like it and I'm really looking forward to having this finished. So that's work in progress number one, my Trista. Okay, work in progress number two is a test knit. I am working my way through the final section of the Gither, which is a colorwork cowl mimicking tartan designed by the amazing Amy Palco of the Meaningful Stitch podcast. I have until March the 20th to finish my test knit and I'm, I'm in good shape to finish. I am on the last section and it will be featured at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase in Edinburgh, Scotland. I won't be there sadly, but uh, I will have my 
the gather cowl and I will pretend we're I'll pretend we're the gather which is another word a Scottish word of saying together so I had shown you my three colors that I had planned to to use and I had to switch out one of the colors as the one was from Olanic Knits which was foraged the dye for it was foraged in Newfoundland but it was uh, substantially thicker it's it is a sport weight yarn so I had to switch it out um, and I ended up going with my original this is a Scottish yarn festival wool and the colorway Tate which is named after a clan this is from Eva of the Scottish yarn festival it is a lovely 80% Cheviot 20% um, sorry 80% Shetland 20% Cheviot four ply glorious and I use that as my first section's main color and then for the contrast color I'm using cast iron which is a black woolen spun uh, yarn from Brooklyn Tweed loft that's the base and then I switched it um, instead of the Olanic knits I, I switched to Biche Bouche Le Petit Lambs Wool which is actually milled in Scotland I realized so that seems appropriate um, yeah it's called dark blue green and it is pure lambs wool from Scotland milled in a fiber mill uh, a family-owned fiber mill so those are my three colors and let me tell you I should have picked more contrast for sure between this dark green which but I love these colors um, I'll show you the tartan that maybe inspired me anyone who knows me knows I'm a bit of a fan of Gerard Butler and uh, yes yeah, so I saw that picture and I and I do love these three colors like a natural um, grayish with black and dark dark green I couldn't resist but as I'm finding out with section three the contrast is not quite not popping as much as it could um, I had to go down two needle sizes to get gauge for the pattern but it's very fun to knit the chart itself is 16 stitch repeats and it's 16 rounds so it's it's fun you just want to get to the next round the next round there's my provisional cast on. Um, I ended up not doing a barber cord cast on, which I spoke about for my venturing into the provisional cast on world. And I used a video by Chili Dog, which is essentially casting over a cable needle. And that worked out great. So yay, I did it because at the other end, I will be doing a graft, um, grafting in the round to join this cowl. Um, section two, each uh this one is the bisha bouche takes center stage as the main color and then you switch up your accent color and which in this case was the tate and then for you see the black is is the um the accent color so each color takes center stage being the main color the largest part in the block um and this is my final section here so section three I mean, I think it's, I like it, but it definitely doesn't have the same effect that we were going for with the whole tartan business by, you know, barely seeing the contrast in the little square sections between the cast iron and the dark blue green. So um, these two sections I blocked, I wet blocked them, soaked them, and I put them over a foam roller that my son and my husband use for uh, rolling out their muscles <laughs> and the circumference fit perfectly so as you can de definitely tell um, the drape and the fabric looks better after the blocking it's quite a difference right look at that and once I finish this final section the pattern instructs you to twist it twice and then pop it on give you a little preview and yeah the gither lovely pattern i'm excited to um to have this and i will i will definitely wear it i i'm a cowl girl all the way <laughs> cowgirl from calgary anyways um yeah so thanks to amy for letting me test that 
I will be done for the 20th of March and then it will be released on March 23rd, 2024. So that is work in progress number two. Work in progress number three. I should have warned everyone to wear sunglasses on this episode between my fletching and this. Um, this here is the Lottie cardigan in progress. <laughs> How pink is that pink? Oh my goodness. That is, that is the pinkest pink ever. So this Lottie cardigan is a gift for my great niece, Maddie, and I've made her two other Lottie cardigans and now she's getting bigger and she was wearing her size three for a three-year-old cardigan, Lottie cardigan, and was like putting her thumbs through the, um, the ribbing in, in the cuffs to keep wearing it. Um, so Auntie Leanne need to get on it and start making her a size five one. So after working through the Trista, which is color work, color work, and then the yarn management of three balls working on together, this cast on is giving me so much joy. I completed this in a day. <laughs> I just was like split for the sleeves. Also, it is knit on a US um, seven, which is a four and a half millimeter needle for the ribbing. And then the body is a US eight, which is a five millimeter. The Lottie cardigan is a design by Carrie Bostick Hogue, which I've made many times. And the best part is it is, well, it's squishy cardigan, cardigan. <laughs> it's a squishy garter stitch cardigan that just continues to increase. You work, um, well, I work a slip stitch edge, so there is no picking up. It only requires two buttons. And when you're done, you're done. So it's top down. You quickly, because of the needle size, split for sleeves. And then I pick them up in a round, um, in the round for, on a US eight needle with, in a nine inch circular and just garter stitch all the way down to the bottom. I, I mean, children's garments are so fun to make after making adult sized ones. And this yarn, okay, this is the story of the day. So um, this is from Rosebud River Mill, Fiber Mill, which is in Rosebud, a small town. It's an hour and five minutes northeast of my house. It's where we took the fiber from sheep shearing that my sister and I um, went and watched last February. Yeah, it's been a year. Um, so we took our fiber out there to be milled. It's not done yet, um, but when I was out there, I bought this, and this was even before the Barbie movie came out. I bought this vibrant pink. It is the squishiest, softest yarn. It is Targi lamb's wool, 80% uh, Targi lamb wool, 20% alpaca. It's two ply sport weight. It is so soft. I have no hesitations about giving this to a five-year-old for a cardigan. It is squishy soft. I mean, the tiniest little bit of veggie matter in it because it's farm yarn. And Maddie's favorite color is pink. So my niece, Lisa, Maddie's mom said that she will squeal over this. So um, can't wait to finish this. This will be done shortly. Just bringing me so much joy, squishy garter, and all the happy pink. So that is work in progress number three, Lottie Cardigan. My fourth and final work in progress is a gift for my husband. Dave tried on my muscle bra and decided he wanted it or wanted his own and I said, okay, let's do that. And his question was, can I have a black one? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I love, love Dave. I even black yarn knit love Dave. But when I showed him this yarn, he went for it. This is Rambling River Rock Colorway by Arcane Fiber. And this is a local dyer to me. He is in Alberta. His name is Tyler and he's amazing. And I made my muscle bra out of Busy Bee colorway. And this one reminded Dave a bit of camel color. It is an absolute joy to make. 
or to knit because the color changes are just incredible. I mean, let's see, my muscle bra. I've only, there we go, we've done about, what, two inches after the increasing? <laughs> so, mm, only 16 more to go until I get to decrease. He absolutely loves the way my first one fit. So um, I'm gonna make it the exact same way using a US one and a half, two and a half millimeter needle. And that gives me a gauge of eight stitches per inch. So the work in progress number four is my second muscle bra. I didn't know if I would make another one and I certainly wasn't thinking about making it this quickly, but I really, really enjoy the way these colors are playing. And it's such a great knit to have in the purse and just bring with me, very portable, very fun. And I especially enjoy the color changes of this yarn. It's just stunning. So that is work in progress. Number four, my final work. Okay, so the Nitty Stew Q, I wanted to discuss, let's say the first mm, 10 things in my queue. Some of them all lump into the same category. I need cardigans. I need cardigans in my life. And this color, this is Cinnabar. It is discontinued. It is uh, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. I have enough to make a cardigan and I need this. It's got all the colors that I love. It's got little flecks of yellow and it's the perfect orange red that I love. So the one uh, cardigan that I'm thinking would look amazing and it's number one in my queue right now. It is called Cocktail by Trico Design MCL. And it in the pattern, it calls for uh, Sandus Garn Petite Knit Double Sunday DK. And it's a 20 stitch gauge. And so I do have recently gotten wooden tips for my, um, for my Chow Gu set. So I'm gonna see if I can get 20 stitch gauge um, when I made the Weekender with Brooklyn T Tweed Shelter, I think my gauge went up to like 16 stitches. <laughs> That's like a bulky weight gauge on uh, worsted slash slightly air and weight woolen spun yarn. So anyways, I really want to make this um, cardigan. I need it for Chris I need it for summer. Um, also, another cardigan that's really caught my eye is called Downstream by Kate Davies. It is a 16 stitch gauge, so I could just um, go ahead and make this as a classic open front um, cardigan with no buttons required. So that's actually very appealing to me. And knit on a US 9, five and a half millimeter needle. <laughs> Another uh, cardigan that's in the queue and I just think it's so stunning, is the Garden Cardigan by Ankastrick. It is made with Ido Kisho, or Kosho, which is lace, lace together, held together, which makes a DK. And I'm loving how it's got the lace and the open front. It just looks like something that would be perfect to wear on a you know, cooler summer evening. And I love that color too. So yeah, I really, feel like there's going to be cardigans, <laughs> quite a few cardigans in my life. And that one is definitely in the running for sure. Um, also in the queue, we've got Maya by May UKP. Now, I just watched the Wooly Thistle Shopcast and they had one of their contributors, one of their contributors, Caitlin. She showed her Maya and she made it with is tax light lopey and it looked like a jacket not cardigan and it was like the, the texture everything about it just like mm, it just made me want to make it however um the pattern at the moment is only available in the book and so um i just purchased a book recently from lina and so i can't really justify buying the contrast book right now just for the one pattern that I love the most so I will hold off on that one but oh man uh, as soon as I saw her talking about it and showing how toothy and rustic and beautiful it looked I really wanted to make that so that's on the queue but um, not until that pattern is available for purchase independently 
and from the Grand Shetland Adventure Knits, which is a book that I bought myself for Valentine's Day. I buy myself the best gifts. I really want to make the Ling V-neck by Mary J. Mecklestone. It is a V-neck color work. It's made with Jameson of Shetland Spindrift. And I know that that is something, it's top down and everything. So I'm really um, planning to make that one ASAP. During a uh, Casey of Young Folk Knits and Wooly Knit, um, their collaboration recently, I ordered some cones using the 20% discount that um, Casey had for her viewers. So I ordered um, some very neutral tones, like a white, um, a dark brown, which is dark, almost black, and then oatmeal. And when I opened my package, there was a, a gray. Um, it said light gray instead of oatmeal. So I contacted Woolly Knit and they had made an error. And they were like, just keep the gray and we'll send you oatmeal as well. So I have a lot of British four ply fingering weight yarn to make all the things from the Grand Shetland Adventure book. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Okay, the other two things I would talk about, um, my plan and intention for this year was to try brioche. And I've always had um, the Satellite Shawl by Andrew Mowry into my favorites. I just, I love this, I love the look of this shawl. And you can use, instead of using two lace weight, you can use uh, a fingering held single and I do happen to have a lot of that now, and I would use my um, woolly knit cone, plus some silk mohair or some, um, maybe that ba brushed baby alpaca. Maybe I will reclaim um, this to use in the satellite shawl. It's always nice, I feel, in this uh, warmer months to have a shawl on the go. And I don't tend to not knit with wool in the, in the summer. I do try and, I just knit all year round. All year round. I don't. If it's hot or too hot to knit, then I'll try and find air conditioning somewhere and just keep making all the things, whether it's seasonally appropriate or not. So tell me in the comments what you'll be knitting uh, for this type time of year. I mean, if you're in the northern hemisphere, hopefully, and it seems that we are heading towards spring and summer months, let me know what you'll be making. Or if you are uh, not in the Northern Hemisphere and you're heading into the winter months, let me know what is on your needles. I do love reading the comments. It adds to the queue and I just, I never get tired of it. So, um, okay, the last thing I'm gonna talk about and I have the yarn for it is Soft Focus by Samantha Guerin. I do have the Manchalope uh, plates. I've got two of them that I got from my friend Christine at Woolen Waves when I was visiting her in Cumberland recently. So uh, I, she was wearing hers and I, that, that yarn as the unspun wool maybe wouldn't hold up so well and would pill too much possibly for my liking in a garment, but in a shawl, the softer, the drapier, the fluffier, the better. So um, I do plan on, that's an imminent cast on for me. As well. So that's the Nitty Stew Q. Um, I am starting to lose the light a little bit, but maybe um, maybe I'll grab my muscle bra and we'll do um, a little knit and chat before I let you go uh, on your merry way. Okay, so I figured now that I don't have to rush and get ready for an early bedtime that I would do a little knit and chat. So I've got my muscle bra and Hopefully, if um, if you have time to sit and knit with me, um, I'll catch you up on what's happened in the last few weeks since my last episode, which was February 14th, so it's been a month. Uh, if you do have to take off or if you're only here for the knitting content, thank you so much for spending your time with me here. I do appreciate um, your most precious commodity, which is your time spent with me, and I will see you next time. Um, if you're sticking around for the knit chat, so since my last episode, I have done some adulting. I went and had a full physical, what I'll call my 50,000 kilometer checkup. I had a mammogram, um, the blood work, all the things checked. And so that felt good to take care of that. I got a clean bill of health, which is very wonderful to know that um, 
yeah, all systems are a go. I was concerned for a little bit because they called me back after the mammogram for a second scan right away. And then they did, they did confirm that it was just some extra tissue. And as it was my very first mammogram, they didn't have a baseline to go, to go by. So, and it was um, not as painful as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'd heard like garage door <laughs> type of pressure and the, the technicians who did my scan were so good, so professional. If any of you are um, do mammographies or mammograms, I just think you're amazing. That's that is quite a quite an experience. So I'm good. I don't need to return. They said for two years, so that was good. Um, had some social activities on the weekend following. Yeah, the weekend following uh valentine's i got together we had a galentine's night so myself and some of my former neighbors we all went out karaoke which is something we used to do when we all lived in the same neighborhood where we all sang and hung out and we even had our quote unquote kids so somehow we have adult children who are legal drinking age and can come to the pub so um, that was really fun. Got to hang out with all my friends and sang some songs. I put it on Instagram and some people were asking what karaoke songs I like. And I, I'm a, a classic rock singer to the core. So I sing, um, yeah, I sing Cold as Ice, uh, the Scorpions, you know, headbanger kind of stuff. But also my daughter Anna was there and we sang a duet and we sang Careless Whisper by George Michael which was pretty fun and I was very proud of her because she was very brave to get up there and we sang a duet together, so that was fun. Yeah, sadly, after that event, um, three days later, I came down with a cold and I was very disappointed because I had a 40 plus hour St. John's overnight that I was really looking forward to. And no, that didn't happen. I had to book off sick and my son was also not feeling well but like really not feeling well, could barely swallow kind of thing. So we were able to get him in on the weekend and to see what was going on. We thought he might have strep throat or mono and he was tested for those things, negative for those things. And it ended up, mother's intuition um, went to the dentist and he had an infected, an infected wisdom tooth. So my son Derek had all four wisdom teeth extracted. Um, first he went on some antibiotics and then he had all four out. So that just occurred, <laughs> you know, never a dull moment. Um, another surgery, Bugs the kitten was neutered. <laughs> and so um, it barely slowed him down. Like, oh my gosh, this kitten, he wore a cone for like a week, maybe. And then he's just, he's back to being um, a goony kitten. I guess I'd have to say the highlight for sure of the last four weeks was getting to take Dave, my husband, with me to work. So I had a long Victoria overnight and he was able to fly with me um, standby. So there was a seat available in the cabin and part of the perks of the job is you can bring loved ones to work and he got to stay at the nice hotel with me in the harbor and we wandered around and enjoyed the sights for a, we call it a micro getaway in Victoria. So that was really nice. That was the last weekend of February. It was actually um, leap day that we flew out together and he got a taste of having to wake up at three in the morning <laughs> to take the Head Start flight back to Calgary from Victoria. Yeah, the first couple weeks here, uh, of March have been a bit challenging for me um, work-wise. I bid for my schedule every month as some of you might know and it's a computer bidding system and I try to bid for weekends off and as a result the computer system which is called a solver uh, basically jammed all my flying of course not on Saturdays and Sundays but with n barely any time between so flying for three days, having 12 hours off, 24 hours off at home, and back out flying for two days, and then back out again for three. So um, I have found that to be rather exhausting, and I didn't get 
any really um, any flying that I actually bid for. It just put a lot of weight into giving me those Saturdays and Sundays off. So I'm going to do better for April. I've determined this is like um, a learning opportunity on how to bid. That is one of the beautiful things of this job is that you can select hopefully places you want to fly to or the parameters with which you operate best. And the other part is that doesn't always work out. It's based on seniority and, you know, metrics and the computer does what the computer does. So please uh, send your thoughts and prayers for April. I have bid for some long St. John's overnights, which of course is my favorite and especially as spring comes around. And yeah, some Phoenix and maybe a San Francisco. And yeah, coming up um, next week, so after this stretch of flying, next week I go to fight my uh, parking ticket. <laughs> I was, I fought one ticket last year. I mentioned it in like August of last year. I was parked on the street when the street cleaner came and this this time this is for the it happened two years in a row since then i get notifications in my email for when street cleanings will begin and i will not be parked on the street so i'm going to um, throw myself at the mercy of the traffic street court <laughs> hopefully on thursday i win that and will not be parked on the street when the street cleaners come and that's um that's basically what's up and yeah so i i hope you all are doing well i hope you enjoyed the episode hopefully the footage from uh, abbotsford area is good tomorrow <laughs> we will see and until i see you next time i hope you keep happy and healthy and enjoy your making and crafting and i hope that the skies are friendly for you thanks so much for joining me today we'll see you next time